Hey everyone, this is Pete. Those who have been around here for a while will know that this channel is primarily about retro gaming. But every now and then, a modern game catches my attention to such a degree that I know I simply have to talk about it and share it with everyone, even if those videos tend to end up lower down my view rankings. The reason I feel this way is that there are so many games out there today that it's very easy for genuinely fantastic experiences to fall through the cracks and go almost completely ignored. I don't know if that's true for today's game, but I do know that there hasn't been a lot of coverage about it online, either in written or video format, since about 2017 or so. The game in question is Star Crawlers, a game for Windows PC, Mac OS and Steam OS that was developed by Juggernaut Games. To date, the only games that Juggernaut have developed are Starcrawlers and its follow-up Starcrawlers Chimera, which at the time of recording is in early access on Steam. Juggernaut Games was established in 2011 and announced its first project Starcrawlers in 2013. A year later, the group took to Kickstarter to fund development, eventually raising over $100,000 over the course of the campaign, $35,000 more than they had initially asked for. Juggernaut's pitch for Starcrawlers was that it was to be a modern take on both classic computer role-playing games and dungeon crawlers, set in a cyberpunk-inspired sci-fi universe. The game features a well-realised original setting that includes plenty of futuristic corporate intrigue, struggling to survive on the fringes of the galaxy, and a somewhat tongue-in-cheek satirical sense of humour. This thankfully never crosses the line into irony and cynicism. Instead, it simply offers a spot of much needed levity amid a lot of the bleakness that the game's setting is otherwise made up of. Cast in the role of a new crawler, it's your job to take on missions from paying clients and complete them to the best of your ability. These send you into a variety of environments including abandoned spaceships, research centres, offices and factories, and task you with carrying out objectives for whoever you're feeling particularly loyal to at the time. Over the course of the game you can take on both predefined story missions and procedurally generated challenges, and the way you approach both will determine how the various factions in the game feel about you. This in turn opens up various opportunities, benefits and drawbacks to you, meaning that no two playthroughs will be quite alike particularly given the many different possible character builds, randomised equipment and multiple solutions to problems. Following the game's release on Steam via the Early Access program in 2015, Juggernaut Games continued to work on Starcrawlers, adding new features and improving the game in various ways. As of 2020, the game is officially complete, as the team has moved on to its next project, the aforementioned Starcrawlers Chimera. That means those of you who, like me, are continually frustrated at modern games that never seem to be quite finished, can safely check this game out in the knowledge that it's not going to radically change or expand at any time in the foreseeable future. This is Starcrawlers as it is presumably intended to be experienced, with everything Juggernaut wanted to include now included. Safe in this knowledge, and having had the game on my wishlist for a good few years, I finally picked up the game during a Steam sale and tried it out on a bit of a whim. I was almost immediately blown away by what an excellent game it is, and the best way to explain why I like it so much is to just show you how it plays. So let's go play Starcrawlers. Okay, here we are with Starcrawlers. Uh, I really like this game, it was such a pleasant surprise to give it a go after a recent Steam sale and discover that it's actually a fantastic game. So, here we are on the concourse of the Space Station Styx. Uh, which is your sort of base of operations. You don't own it, it's just where you hang out. Uh, so you can go and get jobs over at the bar over here. Uh, there's a shop over here to go and buy bits and pieces. There's a black market down here um, where you can trade in sort of illicitly acquired material for credits and also um, get what are essentially loot boxes, but obviously you don't pay any actual money for them. You just uh, spend the credits you've acquired in missions on them and you can get some randomized loot from there uh, as a, uh, a medical bay here we can either go and get healed or get some equipment and a hacking shop here where you can acquire equipment to upgrade your deck for hacking so here's my characters you can add custom artwork in which is always one of my favorite things in um, PC dungeon crawlers 
So in the case of this one, you just press the edit button and you can load in your own PNG files for the main character art, which is here, the combat uh, icon, which also appears in sort of character select screens and the event icon here. And it gives you the full specifications for each of those. So all you need to do is just prepare some images of those size, put them in the relevant folder and then pop in the file names here and load them. So currently in my party, uh, we have Calliope Mori from Hololive, who is a soldier. We have Zentria from Vishojo, who is a prototype. We have Nyanas, who is a void psyker. And we have Kason, who is a cyber ninja. Uh, so they're all level 10 now, because they've been playing this affair. But you level up relatively slowly in this. Um, it's sort of the speed you'd expect from a, a Western computer role-playing game rather than um, a Japanese-style one. So I think the level cap is 30, if I remember rightly. Although I could be wrong on that. I'm not sure, actually, uh, thinking about it, because I'm sure I've seen some screenshots where people have gone much higher than 30. But there are also things like New Game Plus and that sort of thing that I haven't got far enough to explore yet. But anyway, uh, we've got 262 credits at the minute, but I don't think there's anything I really need to spend that on at the minute. So what we'll do, we'll just go and do a mission. So you go into the saloon and uh, you can hire new crawlers if you want to. So that's how you expand your party. You can have uh, up to one of each class in your squad, as it were, and then you can take up to four of them into a mission. Uh, you can stash stuff as well. So you have an inventory of uh, 40 slots, but you've got three stashes of 32 slots each as well. So if you come across stuff that you don't need right now, but you might need later, uh, you can pop it in there. And then you can check the job board for work. So you can wait for new jobs, which basically you pay a bit of money which is supposedly upkeep for your team, and then it, it reshuffles all of the available jobs. This one with the star icon here, this is a story mission. So if you play that, that will advance the story. Uh, all of the other ones are procedurally generated ones with the, uh, the color indicating how difficult they are compared to your current level. So green is about right for your level. So we're level 10, so green missions are level 10. Uh, yellow ones are challenging, so they might be a level higher than you. And then red ones, get into hard and extreme so you might not want to jump into those so our current options uh, i'm in the right level for the next story mission um or we can do a procedurally generated one uh, i think what we'll do we'll do we'll do a story mission because that's, this shows off sort of this game at its best the procedurally generated missions are fun um well, well we'll see we'll see how long this mission takes and maybe if we have time we'll do a procedure generated one as well but if this is going to be a really long mission then i don't know we'll see so our mission lucinda vantel of workers united has tasked you with investigating the waste disposal unit aboard the stella marin so yeah the story of this game involves this uh, abandoned colony ship called the stella marin and you're sort of trying to investigate where all of the crew and passengers went and why all the robots on board have seemingly gone bonkers she believes you will find material evidence implicating Horizon Robotics in the incident aboard the ship. So Horizon Robotics is sort of the de facto leader of the um, the galaxy at the minute. And then Aurora are the, the makers of the starship. And Workers United is sort of a, a kind of power to the people organization. In fact, if we go back here and look at the codex, you can, you can look up all the different people here. So here's Horizon Robotics. The premier robotics supplier for the galaxy, Horizon specializes in high-level manufacturing automation and security trains. A key player in the creation of the universal foundation for prosperity and the restoration of peace after the Great Uprising. Horizon, through its CEO Shazad Patil, is the unofficial leader of the UFP. And so, um, if you build up your relationship with them, you can get credit payouts, you can get options to bypass drones and influence with other UFP corporations. They don't like us very much in the minute because we, we've been doing missions that kind of go against them. Um, so if we go to Other and have a look at Workers United, Workers United's stated mission is to work for ordinary citizens who are often neglected or abused under corporate rule. While their policies are inherently disadvantageous to the corporate interests, they haven't made much headway in effecting real change and are largely dismissed by the UFP as insignificant. So they might seem like sort of the good guys so you can you can side with them 
uh, if you want to, but you don't have to. That's the important thing. The, the really nice thing about this is you can pick and choose your missions and the things you do in missions that will affect your relationships. Now, it is quite a bit easier to um, <laughs> spoil your relationship with people than it is to improve it. So you have to be a bit careful. Uh, I haven't run into any negative consequences yet, but I'm sure that will happen at some point. So we might have to do a bit of uh, massaging of the uh, the relationship values at some point. But for now, um, our effect for completing this mission will improve our relationship with Workers United further. Uh, and it will also decline our relationship with both Horizon and Aurora further as well. So we getting into territory where we're going to have to be a bit careful. We'll get 100 credits and 500 experience for completing this. And these are our four team members ready to go. Your comm link crackles to life, heavy with static interference. Hey, can you hear reception? Bad. Oh, no, you copy. The comlink hisses with white noise and then clears. Yo, add to jump channels. You're pretty deep in that thing. Can't get a clear signal on wire relay. I got Lucinda on hold, but no way you're going to be able to have an intelligible conversation through the noise. You want me to relay anything? Tell her we'll try and contact when we find the waste disposal unit. Roger, will do. I'll stick as close to your position as I can, so just holler when you need a lift out. Good luck in there. Luna disconnects. So Luna is your pilot. Um, you've when the game starts you've obviously partnered with her um to for her to ferry you around between your assignments she doesn't take part in missions or anything like that but she's uh, sort of a a friend and confidant as it were okay so once you're into a mission uh, you go into this first person perspective that has full mouse look by default it is a dungeon crawler though so you move by step like this and you'll see the map up in the top left corner is uh, grid based as well okay so here we are inside the ship we're looking for the waste disposal unit we're not going to be getting down there and the only door in here is here these are cred sticks you can get yourself some money. Let's put the flashlight on as well so we can see a little bit better. There's a locker. The prototype data chip. Still value really seven. It's not great, but may as well take it. You can always ditch it if we don't need it. More grid sticks lying around. Always nice to get a bit of extra money in the pocket. Okay, well, this is unpleasant. Pump control. That was straightforward. There are actual puzzles in this, which is nice. So I guess there's, oh, there's some more doors under the water. So we're going to need to find a way to lower that water level even further, I think. Hello. Hopefully that's dropped it still further. Some more creds. And still dirty water down here, which we don't want to go into. Submerged crate. Can't reach that at the minute. Okay, let's see if... Uh... Yeah, there we go. Get a little bit further down now. There's another pump control over there. Gotta be careful because there are traps and stuff around the place. Traps are sort of visible in plain sight. You don't need like a thief class to see them or anything like that, but you do have to spot them yourself. Um, but you can usually disarm them. Okay, that door's not opening. So I guess we go back the other way. 
As you move to leave, the door in the rear wall opens and a small drone of unfamiliar make waddles into the room. Zentrea, processing failure. Model lock recognized. Maximum alert. Okay, so one says nothing. And the strange drone says, bzzz, warp, plop, 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 plop. The drone charges towards you in an ungainly fashion. Attack! Alright, so here's the combat system. It is turn-based, and it's based on the idea of time units. So this bar across the top here, uh, you can see it's Zentrea's turn right now. You can click on her to get details about her, and any status effects she's got. Um, these little white numbers here show how many time units um, each character is further on down the timeline. And if you click and hold on a character, you, you have access to all of the abilities that you might want to choose from. And you see that when you hover over an ability, a little arrow appears up in the time bar at the top, indicating how many time units that takes um, and where that will put the character in the turn order after completing that. So you can use that to sort of plan out your abilities. So here, if I use Zentrea's Haiku ability, which buffs the whole party, she'll get another go before the enemy has a chance to act. Uh, so I'll do that first. Motion over there. Nurse Ratchet's blade clanks loudly. Time for your checkup. Right, so it's Nyana's go. She is a Void Psyker, which means she uses this Void Energy here um, to power her various abilities. Although some of her abilities also generate uh, Void Energy as well, like this one, which will drain shields and generate energy. Kason, meanwhile, has a bunch of ninja style skills. So she'll do her flip kick here to gain one to three combo points, takes bonus damage and you act sooner. So she'll get another go in a moment. And that blob above the the, uh, the enemy there, that's a combo point that she can subsequently use to power various special abilities. Zentrea now, we can use her target lock ability to obsess over a target and deal bonus damage to it. Another go for Kason. So she can now uh, do another ability. So she'll do her combo strike, which deals bonus damage and consumes one combo point, and then adds further combo points if that enemy is attacked by an ally. So you see there's this arrow above you, above the enemy now, reminding you that if you attack that enemy, it will add bonus combo points for Kason to take advantage of. So with Kali here, we'll fire a rocket at plop there. This does a huge amount of damage and adds a bunch of extra combo points. It's now Zentrea's go. She's obsessed with this target, so you notice that the lighting is sort of focused in on this uh, on the drone here. Uh, let's just fire a normal shot. There we go. All done. And that's how combat works. Obviously, it normally goes a bit quicker than that because I'm not explaining everything. Um, but you'll see. The surface of the defeated drone begins to bubble and melt. Within moments, it begins to rapidly dissolve into a puddle of black goo. Kason says, Kelly says, okay, anyone else see that? And then Trey says, preparing report. Target was not service drone, likely invader. You search the area where the drone was destroyed, but there is nothing to find. The black goo has dissolved completely, leaving no trace of the drone. Modifying threats, likelihood of large conflict, high, quite high indeed. The black moor yawns. Behold, the stench of decay beckons. Yeah, so all the character classes are also uh, personality types, which is quite fun. These are both locked. An Aurora Starlight security door bars your pet. The security on these doors is top notch. You'll have a difficult time cracking it without an excess badge. Okay, we'll leave that alone for now then. So I guess we go back to the other room. Or oh, well, we could go down there. Let's check the other room first. More credits. Yeah, they are. Well, we can reach a crate. A boomslang edge of toxicity, which is a rare light melee weapon. Let's take that, because that might be good for Kason. Or Nyanas, for that matter. 
So, stat changes if Kason equips this item 53 damage versus 42 damage, adds 15% shield pierce, 3% critical hit, and takes 20 less time units. Well, that seems like an improvement, and it's a blue weapon as well. So, it uses the sort of um, the loot colouring convention that was established by games like Diablo and so on. So, white is the worst, green is decent, blue is good, then there's purple uh, for. Um, Epic, I think they call it, and then orange for legendary. Okay, cool. So that should uh, get case on a little bit more power, which is very much welcome. And there's nothing else down here. So let's proceed back to where we were going, which is down here. Anything over there? Don't think so. No, let's just head for the door. Deeper into the bowels of the ship. Hmm, this is unsettling. Okay. Um... Oh my goodness, the waste disposal unit is trying to kill us. Alright. Alright. Uh, flip kick. God, he's got low health. 2,212 health with heavy armor. Okay, haiku everyone if you please. Accurate shooting, the enemy forces down. Promotion for me. And case on. Whack. Kelly, rocket. Oh no, it summoned helpers. Uh, okay, so let's charge Zentreya's Thunderclap, which is an AoE attack. Yana's is stunned. Ow. Okay, son is stunned. Everyone is stunned. Uh, Nyanas. Give it some of that. Okay, son, use some of those combo points. Zen, fire! Okay, so the helpers aren't too difficult to deal with. Okay, so on more combo points. Uh, consume all combo points on all enemies. Three stacks of setup boost damage, 1%. Hmm. Okay, Yannis now has 30 void energy, which is enough to power one of her sort of special abilities. Missed! That's no good, is it? Uh, right, you pop a Bouncing Betty on there. So Bouncing Betty is a bomb that attaches to things, and every time the enemy takes an action, Bouncing Betty explodes and bounces to another enemy. Uh, but in this case, the Waste Disposal Unit is the only enemy, so it'll just keep uh, attacking them. Come on, Kason, hit. There we go. Yanos. Uh, deals damage over three turns, grants regeneration of void energy. Or randomly charm, confuse, stun, or deal damage each turn. Don't know if that will work on this thing, but let's give it a go. They are debuffed by madness, that's good. Alright, come on, Zen. And case on. Consume all combo points on enemies. 374 to 527 damage. That sounds good. Very nice. Alright. Uh, 
chuck in the magnetronic bomb as well. Okay, not as effective as I hoped. God, taking a beating. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Zen, I think it's time you're obsessed. Charge the arm cannon. Fire! There we go. Beautifully done. Everyone took a hell of a beating, but well. The hulking waste disposal unit spasms fitfully. Turning to leave, you realise the chamber behind you is filled with scores of bizarre looking drones, all silently watching your battle with the waste disposal unit. They all begin to babble and march towards you. No honour in a futile death. Flee! Roger. Alright, people, let's mosey. Run for it! <coughs> oh, excuse me. Loot cash. Yes, please. Oh, stuff. Stuff. Oh, lots of stuff, actually. All right, let's investigate. I think Nyanas could probably do with a, a new weapon as well. Oh, yeah, that's much better for Nyanas. 58 damage versus 35 damage. Ooh, or 68 damage versus 35 damage. Let's give her the hammer. I like the idea of Nyanas with a hammer. And then Kason can have that one. Actually. Actually, no. Let's give Nyanas that one. Because... If you look down at the upgrades, it's got a Void Psyker's Aura 3, and Yanis is a Void Psyker. So that's an upgrade that only she can take advantage of. So let's give her that one. Kason can use the hammer. Yeah, let's do that. She's now a ninja with a hammer. Ah, I see what you mean about the enemies. Um, okay. Oh, we can leg it this way. Run! More drones are pouring into the chamber. Are you ready to leave? Yes, let's get out of here. You mash the door button as drones continue to fill the chamber. Luna, come in! Yo, you guys find her. There are too many new friends that want to play. We must retreat to the Heidi Hall and uh, very fast, Miss Moon. Five by five, Lunar inbound. I'll get you ass out of this fire, sugar. Let's move. Workers United should be informed about your encounter with the waste disposal unit and the bizarre drones. All right, let's pop into the bar. The typically raucous saloon is strangely quiet and patrons are huddled around the holovid screens. Doc Sam notices you enter and motions you towards the displays as he turns the volume up. Looks like the CEO of Aurora Starliner, Xavier Deneau, is holding a press conference. Let's watch the video. Elbowing your way closer to a Hollywood display, you spot Talry Hobbs perched on a stool and Lucas Filch slouched in the corner. On screen, the CEO of Aurora is stationed at a podium and flanked by bigwigs from several corps. And this is why, in concert with our allies at Astro Hunt Technologies, W. Yutaki, Foxkin Armory, J. and Binotech, and Kage Enterprises, we are proud to announce the formation of a new interim government, hereafter, the Accord. To move towards a democratically elected government that elevates the needs of humanity over those of a select few corporations. Deneau goes on to describe plans for arranging local elections. Put on the UFP feed, I want to hear him whine. Shut up, you should be in here, brat. A bottle goes sailing across the saloon from Tallery to Lucas's table. <coughs> Okay, let's have a chat with 
Tellery. You join Tellery at her table as she sips from an unlabeled bottle. Hey, pretty wild, huh? UFP sycophants are nergus as hell. She gestures towards Lucas Filch, who stumbles drunkenly towards the exit when he notices you looking in his direction. Pretty wild. Say, you've been working with these corps on the Stella Marion thing, right? You got any contacts involved with this Accord news? Uh, I've been running for Bokers United recently. Oh, well, I won't pray. Better get back to the shop anyway. Probably going to be a run of people looking to gear up. Stay safe. Doc arches his brows as you walk over. Interesting times. I hate interesting times. Bad for business. What do you know about what's going on? I know I'm here to set crawlers up with work, not spout exposition at your convenience. You want to buy a drink? Then we can talk. Doc reaches under the bar and produces a bottle of dubious substance. Seeing as it's such a momentous occasion, I got a bottle of Antonio's Special Reserve I've been keeping. You want to crack this open with me and we'll talk about what's happening? Cork fears a hundred credits. Sure, why not? <coughs> Doc's cybernetic arm hoists the bottle and pops the cork, pouring out shots automatically. He smirked at the arm as it moves with the jerky routine. You kids got it easy these days. Lose a limb, they can grow you a new one. You lose that in the war? How old do you think I am? War was a hundred plus years ago. Nah, my folks are in it though. Holdouts from the army that took to hiding out on the rim to move on with their lives. Until the UFP mop-up teams found him a dozen years on. They got killed, and I got lucky. He raises the cybernetic arm and waggles the fingers stiffly. Just lost a limb. Sorry to hear that. No love lost with the UFP, eh? Well, since UFP came to power and freed up regulations on biotech and the like, you can now get a cloned limb on the cheap. No more need for janky cybers like I got. The irony sure ain't lost on me. Ever think about getting a cloned one instead? Nah, not much point when you're courting the Reaper like I am. Besides, this old thing helps when I need to escort some drunkard off the premises. Speaking of which, let's have this drink. Doc grins and lifts his shot. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So a bunch of corps have got together and decided they're starting a new government. The UFP is going to try and squash them. What are we drinking to? Good fortune to us, poor aim to our enemies. Here's to that, bottoms up. You down your shots and the liquor fills you with a warm glow. Oh, I love the feeling of napalm in the gut. Sadly, I cannot. Alcohol is beyond me. I am quite upset. Guess being a machine ain't all that great. <laughs> so what's your take on what's going on? We're in for a hell of a time. This Accord government may claim it's temporary and for the people, but UFP ain't going to treat it any nicer for it. I reckon this means all-out war between the two before long. What do you reckon? I think it means plenty of opportunity for a morally flexible crawler. You ain't wrong on that. Mind you play your cards close and watch your crews next first. UFP, Accord. Now, as even Workers United won't extend you that same courtesy. I'll keep that in mind. So what's lined up? Uh, yep. A friend of yours at Workers United left a message for you to call him as soon as possible. I'll set up the wire for you. Before you do, what's the deal with Tauri Hobbs? Doc regards you coolly. Not usually one to inform on the locals, but I'm concerned for that kid. Her parents got picked up by the UFP and do a hard time in a re-education facility. She's whip crack smart, so she's fine taking care of herself. Where well, she might be thinking of something stupid with all this accord business though. Thanks, I'll take that wire call now. Doc turns and punches into numbers to an interface behind the bar. He pauses, casually looking over the bar patrons and locals before turning back to the interface. I'm going to route this to the wire terminal outside, give you a bit more privacy. Just head out there when you're ready to call your contact. Thanks, I'll pick up outside. After making sure no one is loitering nearby, you punch in the wire address Doc set up for you to contact your client. The call connects almost instantly. Hello again, Callie. I must apologise in advance. I don't have long to talk. There's much to deal with after the Accord announcement. Let's deal with the most pressing matter first, though. What did you find aboard the Stella Marin? Yes, let's discuss the Stella Marin. You're going to want to hear this. Excellent. What did you find at the coordinates? I was hoping you'd call on site, but you never did. They had to make a hasty retreat. The area was swarmed with hostiles. Oh, but that was to be expected, no? The ship drones have all gone rogue. 
Not waiting, but so clean as military killing machines, an unknown type. This is very alarming, but also very exciting. The Stella Marine certainly didn't have any combat drones on board. They must have been brought on by a third party. I would assume Horizon. There is more intel. They dissolve when defeated. Nanite self-destruct. What? How bizarre. What did you find at the target coordinates? Were you able to locate any evidence that might link these combat drones to Horizon and the UFB? Negative on that. Trash unit tried to kill me. It had a bad time. I met a lovely trash compactor unit, but he was clearly in no mood to chat. He tried to eat me. It was quite alarming. Don't we all agree? There should have at least been evidence in the material collected by the ship drones. Perhaps the combat drones are transporting it elsewhere. I will speak to our technicians about the melting aspect. Clearly must, we must capture one of these combat drones to proceed. All right. Lucinda hesitates. In the meantime, though I am loath to deviate from our investigation, I'm afraid I must impose on you further with a matter of some urgency. An associate of mine has attracted the attention of the UFP and they have subsequently trapped him in his uh, hideout. He has sent a distress signal and I'm obligated to aid him if I can. Would you be willing to assist? What kind of associate has a hideout and is being hunted by the UFP? Lucinda looks embarrassed and shuffles some papers nervously. Uh, you should probably know he's something of a pirate, I'm afraid. I hope that's not an issue. Your associate is a pirate? Oh, uh, well, I should be more specific. My associate is not so much a pirate per se, but does associate with them. It's complicated. This end should be straight. Story, I'm prevaricating. I'd hope not to involve you in this, but my organisation has some ties with extreme elements in the resistance against the UFP. My associate is a member of one such group. They call themselves Ragnarok for some ghastly reason, but you would probably refer to them as anarchists. If rescuing your associate helps Workers United, then I'll do it. Thank you. Such forthright support is refreshing. Now, I'm not asking you to become involved with this group, and I certainly don't condone their methods, but I do have an obligation to my associate to see they are safe from the UFP. If Ragnarok is so effective, why have I never heard of them? Lucinda smiles. It's due to their anonymity that they are so effective. Militant groups that publicly organise and draw attention are stamped out by the UFP as quickly as they organise. Ragnarok maintains an extremely low profile, operates in discrete cells and has substantial financial backing. How has Workers United escaped the attention of the UFP? Lucinda sighs wearily. Precisely because Workers United is the polar opposite of Ragnarok, we are openly ineffective, lacking in resources, and pose no serious threat to the UFP. They allow us to exist because we are toothless, and they know it. Don't be so harsh on yourself. You give a voice to the oppressed. That's very kind of you to say, Kelly. We do the best we can with what we have. I'm sure we could do substantially more if we had access to the funding Ragnarok does. Where does an anarchist group find financial support? If you can add to that, you'll have achieved more than I. My associate won't share the source of Ragnarok's funding. I've made some discreet inquiries through other channels, but I've been afraid to press too far. Perhaps if you... Lucinda suddenly looks alarmed. Oh dear, here we are chatting away when there's a rescue operation that needs to take place. Send me the mission details. Yes, of course, I'm transmitting them to your wire agent now. Please make haste, there's no telling how long my associate can hold out from a UFP siege. What is the name of the associate I seek? Oh, did I not mention it? Rest of the Hook. It's more of a nom de guerre, I believe. I am off to rescue Rest of the Hook. Thank you. Please contact me after you've located Rasa and we shall resume our investigation of the Stella Marine. Perhaps he may even be willing to support us. We shall talk again soon. <coughs> Alright, so if we look at the job board now, this next one is hard. Uh, recommended level 12. So we're not going to go and do that just yet because we are still level 10. We're pretty close to 11. Um, but still 10 for now, so it's probably a bad idea to go and do that one now. So what we'll do, we'll go and do a procedurally generated one as well, so you can see <coughs> you can see um, how they work. So our choices on that one, we have a lot of choices, but let's go for a green one. Uh, asset recovery. Cargo Enterprise needs a crew to acquire some Cyberlink surround tech modules that don't technically belong to them. Tex Engineer Corp is known to be in possession of some. Uh, this one. 
Rhizome has acquired information that Astrohen Technologies is coming to the recent acquisition of a new design of harvester drain that could revolutionize the industry. If someone were to receive it for Rhizome, they'd be grateful. Or, Foxkin Armory needs a crew to acquire some neural linked freighter shields that don't technically belong to them. Agrigen Food Corp is known to be in possession of some. Okay, so our choices here is gain some reputation with Kage, who are suspicious of us at the moment. Gain rep with Rhizome, who are suspicious of us at the moment. And gain rep with Foxkin, who are neutral towards us at the minute. Um, let's try and repair our relationship with Kage a little bit. And launch the mission. And here we go. Okay, so we've got some security cameras to deal with this time. So while most of this game is turn-based, sequences like this are real-time. Oh, it's a coffee machine. <laughs> yeah, sequences like this are real-time, so you need to sneak past the security cameras properly, as it were. A security turret pops out the floor and begins to rapidly sweep the room for intruders. You have mere moments before it de detects your presence. Get the attention of the turret and initiate conversation protocols. Hey, old fellow machine, you are doing a fine job. You should ignore us. The turret scanners sweep over your team repeatedly as though confused. It chirps a happy note before retracting into the floor as swiftly as it appeared. Nice! Alright, so some more baddies to deal with. Cyclone kick! Alright, Zen, you give us some haiku. And then... You charge up your arm cannon. Kali, you give that a good blast. Then, lovely. Nicely done, everyone. Success, teamwork, motivate, vision, inspire. Money. Ooh, an Eon Cube. Those can be exchanged for sort of really good weapons and armor. Flavored data ship. Brains! Oh, hello. He's in there, but I don't think he can get to us. Because the door's locked. That is a boss enemy though. It's good to try and defeat those because they, they often have good loot. And um, they're worth a decent amount of experience. All right, there's one of our things. And you also see that bosses appeared as a bonus objective now as well, so. Worth seeing if we can get our way into that room somehow. There's a couple of ways we could do that. We can find a key card. Uh, or we can hack our way into the room. Here's an item we can pinch and auction off. Med kit. I will have that. Monkey Bear says, yes, you can. Quiet little cupboard. 
Good for having a cry in. Alright, let's try it over here. Oh, leaving their crud chips all over the place. Someone left their terminal logged in. Take a closer look. You've located what appears to be the inter-office database. You might be able to gather some information on the location of your objective. Search the database! You spend a few moments skimming through files, but can't find any information relevant to your objective. At least you haven't been detected. Alright, fair enough. This terminal seems to be busted. Try turning it off and on again. You power off the terminal and after waiting an appropriate amount of time, power it back on. The corruption is still present. An alarm begins to sound from the terminal. Bog that one. It's fine. See? Everything's fine. Lesson learned. Ooh, that's a key card. Can we go and fight the zombie now then? Is it the right key card is the question. The security door panel unlocks with a quiet beep. Hello. Oh, quite tough. You got a lot of shields as well. Okay, so then haiku. Okay, son. Cyclone kick, if you please. Then charge. Yanas. Fire! Uh, Kelly, you drop out a Bouncing Betty, if you please. Okay, that's taken that one's shield down, which is nice. Um, hmm. Frag Grenade. Just shields holding, which is good. Fire! All right, case on. Uh, hit. Nice. There we go. Lovely. <laughs> All right, Kason, uh, give this one a hit as well. There we go. Uh, hit! Five combo points on that one. Very nice indeed. Kelly. Uh... Rocket launcher. Zen, I think you can start obsessing over that one. And charge your arm cannon. Case on. Oh, you didn't kill it. Alright, that killed it. Fire! <clears throat> That's the other thing with um, with Zen there. She malfunctions every so often. And the more she uses her special abilities, the more likely she is to malfunction.
You see that one that I just did there? It draws these little glowing bomblets closer to the target. Kelly drops those with most of the attacks that she does. Fire! Nicely done, everybody. Foxkin Breaker, uncommon heavy shotgun. Not amazing. Salvage Drone Core. You broke it real good, but it still works, sort of. Steal those. Disarm that trap. Except that terminal's broken. Okay. Steal some booze. All right, it's going quite nicely. Let's take a look over here. Hello. You can go on fire. Callie also has a buff where if you set things on fire, she increases her critical rate and her own fire resistance. Oh, that's nice. The fortune thing there. Good fortune to us, poor aim to our enemies. That's based on the thing that you said in the bar. Very nice indeed. Right, where are these things we need? Not in here. Objectives usually show up on the map, so as soon as you go into a room that's got an objective, you can usually see, so you don't have to ferret around too much. Servador, an impenetrable servador looks down on you with clear loathing. Okay, guess we're not going in there then. Disarm the lasers. Oh, I hate those things. They give you radiation sickness if you uh, if you get caught by them. So we're just gonna have to quietly sneak past. Oh, there's a thing on that desk though. What is it? Callie approaches the lockbox and opens it with authority. The box is full of gun enthusiast magazines and paraphernalia, as well as a couple of pieces of sweet gear. Kaysan sees somewhat pleased. <coughs> nice. Well, I'm not going to complain. I am going to run, though. Oh, hello. Then IQ as usual. So that buff is very useful because it, it not only buffs critical rate and accuracy, um, it also um, adds a turn of regeneration as well. So it's one of the only ways to heal. As healing mid mission in this is rather difficult. Uh, let's. Do that. And then Callie, you chuck in a frag grenade. Oh, malfunction. Missed. Come oh, on, Zan, finish him off. Level up for Kelly. 
All right, so she can have some additional ability points in Magnetronic Bomb. Oh, another objective over there. All right, that's two out of three. Another key card. Broken server. Thank you. Because why not? Okay, son. Cyclone kick, if you please. Thank you very much. Declining rapidly. <laughs> All right, very nice. Telephone canister, that gives you um, some experience straight away. I'm going to give that a case on because she's slightly behind everyone else. to steal lots of booze to steal now that terminal over there with that you can jack in and do the hacking sequence uh, which we won't bother with right now because we don't really need to um, but you can use that to sort of bypass certain security systems and so on all right there's another objective in there try the key card yes oh dear i walked through a laser beam the security turret pops out the floor and begins to rapidly sweep the room for intruders. Come on, Zen. Hey, old fellow machine, you are doing a fine job. You should ignore us. Sometimes she calls them the ball cups of space and they get upset with that. So, uh, yeah, fortunate. All right, I think we're done. Opening the box, you find a huge cache of tiny velvety pelts. From the looks of it, they're the pelts of the Ninurakian Varn, widely coveted by high-end designers for creating luxury clothing. It is common knowledge that the creatures are now endangered, and goods made from them are considered very exclusive and highly sought after by wealthy, coward citizens. Take a closer look. Searching the lockbox for more information, you find a bill of sale with details on both the seller and the purchaser. Report them! Hollow Earth, Hollow Soul would be interested to hear about these activities. You pen a quick missive describing what you found in the responsible parties. You confiscate the goods as well. It's important to prevent the villains from profiting off abuse of vulnerable species. Nicely done. Time to move. All right, let's get out of here. Cargate Enterprises is pleased with your success. Tex Engineer Corp was angered by your actions. Okay, so we get plus five reputation with Cargate and minus five with Tex Engineer Corp. And some are leveled up. Who leveled up? Zen. Uh, let's see, you can level that up. Nyan is also leveled up, so you can have another one of those. And Kason did as well, so you can have another one of those. Marvellous, and we've got an email. Nature's ally, thank you for the intelligence you provided us. Our mission is to preserve the abundance of our universe and maintain the biological diversity of each and every one of the multitude of planets now threatened by humanity's expansion. With your assistance, these goals can be achieved. Please accept this small token of our appreciation for your service. It's a tote bag. Thanks. <clears throat> anyway, we've gone on for nearly an hour there. Um, so I think it's probably time to finish. There's Starcrawlers. I absolutely love this game. It's fantastic. And it's nice that you can sort of dip into it for a quick session on one of those procedural missions if you want to. Uh, or you can work your way through the story. 
or in practice you do a bit of both because you'll need to level up between story missions and you'll want to manipulate the reputations of various groups and so on as well but yeah this is a great game I highly recommend to people who enjoy um both old school crpgs so if you like shadow run and stuff like that that you'll probably get a kick out of this uh, and those who like dungeon crawlers as well it's a really nice combination of elements that works really well and it's just polished really nice here so it's a really really good package uh, all in all oh, and if you're wondering uh, the music is done by ben prunty who did the soundtrack to ftl as well um, so it's got a really good soundtrack anyway i think we'll leave that there as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again next time <laughs>